So another useful comparative property of numbers is known as the LCM, the least common multiple. And this emerges from the following. If I have two or more numbers, the least common multiple is the least, the smallest number that's a multiple of all of them. Uh, mathematicians are not particularly noted for their ability to create novel and exciting names for things. Uh, so the least common multiple is the least multiple. Uh, because we know the definitions, it's actually easy to do the mathematics. Given any number p, a multiple can be found by multiplying p by any whole number q. So given any number, the product p times q is a multiple of p. And again, if I have two or more numbers, I want to find the number that is the smallest multiple of all of them. So, for example, let's find the least common multiple of p equals something and q equals something else, conveniently in our prime factored form. So if I want to find a common multiple of p and q, I want to find a number that is a multiple of both. And the simplest possible multiple of both p and q is, well, I want something that's a multiple of p. So it's something times p, and I want something that's a multiple of q. So it should be q times something. Well, how about p times q? This is a multiple of p because it's p times something, and it's a multiple of q because it's something times q. So a common multiple of p and q is the product of p and q. Now, this might not be the least common multiple, so let's eliminate what we don't need. Now, how you speak influences how you think. So in order to be a multiple of p, what I need is at least three factors of two, because that two to the third is part of my factorization. So I need at least three factors of two. And in order to be a multiple of q, I need at least, well, I don't need any multiples of two because two does not appear in the prime factorization. So I need at least three factors of two to be in the least common multiple. So I've got to keep this two to the power of three. Now, same argument, in order to be a multiple of p, I need at least two factors of 3. And to be a multiple of q, I need at least three factors of 3. So in order to be a multiple of both of them, I need at least two, at least three. I need at least three factors of 3. So I need this 3 to the third, and I don't really need this 3 to the second. That is an that is a bit, uh, that's actually unnecessary, but I need at least a 3 to the third. And finally, in order to be a multiple of both p and q, well, in order to be a multiple of q, I need at least two factors of 5, and I don't need any factors of 5 to be a multiple of p, but I can include them anyway, so I need these 5 to the second. And so, in order to be a multiple of all of these things, what I need is at least three factors of 2, at least three factors of three, and at least two factors of five. And we've eliminated all the factors we don't actually need, and so that says what we have left is going to be our least common multiple. Well, here's another common problem. So hot dogs come in packages of 10, while hot dog buns come in packages of 8. Your mileage may vary on these, but let's assume that these numbers are correct. What's the smallest number of packages of each that you can buy so you'll have the same number of hot dog buns as hot dogs? Now, a little analysis goes a long way. So let's think about this. If I buy more than one package of hot dogs, then the number of hot dogs I have is going to be a multiple of 10. Likewise, if I buy more than one package of hot dog buns, the number of hot dog buns is going to be a multiple of eight. And since I want to have the same number of hot dog buns as hot dogs, then I want to find a multiple of 10 that is also a multiple of eight. And because I want to find the smallest number of packages, I want to find the smallest number of so that is a multiple of 8 and a multiple of 10. I want to find the least common multiple of 10 and 8. So let's go ahead and do that. To find the LCM of 10 and 8, we should factor both. 10 equals 2 times 5. 8 equals 2 to the third. And I can always find a common multiple by multiplying the two numbers. So a common multiple of 10 and 8 is 10 times 8. So there's my 10 times 8.
Well, that's not necessarily the least common multiple, so we'll eliminate the things that we don't need. So in order to be a multiple of 10, I need to include a 2 and a 5. In order to be a multiple of 10, I need to include a 2. And to be a multiple of 8, I need to include 3 factors of 2. So I need at least 3 factors of 2. So to be a multiple of both, I need at least 3 factors of 2. And this one, this extra one here, I don't really need, so I can get rid of it. If I want to be a multiple of both, I need at least one factor of five. I don't need any here, but I need at least a factor of five here. And so I'm going to keep this factor of five here. And so there's my common multiple of both. And so there's my least common multiple. Now be careful with what we've found. This is the least common multiple of 10, the number of hot dog bucks, and eight, the number of hot dog buns. However, the question asks for the smallest number of packages. So let's think about that. So our least common multiple, 5 times 2 to the third, well, that is a multiple of 10, as promised. It's also a multiple of 8, as promised. And so this says that I need 2 to the second, I need 4 packages of 10. That's 4 packages of hot dogs. And I need 5 packages of 8. That's hot dog buns. So I need four packages of hot dogs and five packages of hot dog buns.